Hi guys. Okay. Today we're going to talk about little bush pot. This is the one quart bush pot that Pathfinder's selling right now that I did in a recent video and I doctored it up a little bit. And let's talk about individual cooking. Let's talk about individual bush pot needs. Now this is not where we're toting the whole thing to feed the family. And I've talked about this with using a canteen cup and some of my simple cooking series and stuff like that. But many of you don't carry a U.S. Army canteen. You carry one of them round water bottles. And so you don't carry the canteen and set. And I understand that. So we're gonna approach it from a bush pot, a small thing. And a lot of this stuff could also be done in a big mug. Sorry for the background, but they got the road crew is out here redoing a major ditch on the canyon road right over here. And you're going to hear a lot of bumping and banging and squealing from big machinery digging a ditch. So I'm sorry. But back to what I need for me, okay? A lot of times all I need to do is make up some pre-packaged, easy to carry. Now that doesn't mean I have to carry an entire MRE or whatever. And a lot of those foods are a little bit on the expensive side, aren't they? But there's other stuff floating around your local grocery store that I could utilize to make up a meal. So I want something that all I need is water to heat it up. And I then need to turn it into a size and useful package for a single serving in a bush pot with a little bit of water, a little bit of heat, and a spoon to eat it with. Okay, And this can be multiple things. So let me take into the kitchen right quick and we're going to set up one of my all-time favorites to carry which is camp taters. And here's how we're going to do that. Okay, what we're going to do with this project is we're going to need a mixing bowl of some kind, a package of instant mashed potatoes, and a pick, uh, package of instant gravy. Now vary these to whatever you like. Okay. Now realize that this package creates four servings of a quarter cup each and that you're supposed to put two cups of water to make this rehydrated. The brown gravy, what we're just going to add as a flavoring really, you're supposed to actually put this in a pan and cook it and double it up. You still get the flavor, just not as strong, but I'm just going to mix it as a dry ingredient into in here. So when I dump it in the water, it's got just plain potato taste. It does taste like a little bit of gravy with it, okay? But it's supposed to be one cup. So we're just going to combine these as a one-to-one. -one. So we're going to take our bowl. And we're going to open up the package. Nice and easy without slinging it all over the kitchen. take the package of gravy, same idea, put this a little more where you can see it, open it up, and dump the gravy onto the taters. And then we're just going to take a spoon and mix that real good to integrate it together. I like to turn the bowl and kind of whisk a spoon in a circle from the outside toward the middle till it's fully integrated like that. Now, what we're going to do, <coughs> I like to just take a large piece of aluminum foil like this and I'm going to shake that bowl out here onto the aluminum foil. Now using some sort of handy straight edge, I'm going to very unscientifically basically divide it in half like this. Okay, so that means now that is uh, not quite, let's add that over there. There, that looks more about half each, just eyeballing it. Alright, so the package originally held 
two cur uh, two full cups of potatoes, which was four one quarter. Excuse me, one full cup of potatoes because it's four one quarter cups. So each of these right now is a half cup. Now I'm going to take another piece of aluminum foil. And I'm going to slide it up under this edge. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to roughly eyeball it and divide it in half again. Sliding it over to this aluminum foil. Okay. So that is one serving. Okay. Right there, that's one serving. We'll get to that in one second. Now we'll take our other piece of aluminum foil, slide it under here, break this one off onto it, just like that. <coughs> Y'all got to forgive me for being a little bit stuffy, but it's Yopon is blooming and blacky sinuses are running. Okay. Now on this one, same thing, we're going to just divide it roughly in half, like that. Slide our last piece of aluminum foil up under the edge and transfer it over. Just like that. Now that's four equal shares, right there. Now I'm going to center it up toward the middle, all the way around, just like that. And now I'm going to fold lengthways up and mash it flat. Fold about a, quarter, a half inch back toward me, squeezing it flat all the way to the seam. Take it down a little, fold it again, all the way, and I'm going to come from one end, and I'm going to start, and I'm going to fold it over tight, up to about where I feel the powder's at, like that, and I stand it up on end, shake it down, in that tube real good and now I'm going to fold this end over just like I did the other all the way back down here and just kind of fold your corners over a little bit just like that so you ain't got no sharp point just like that and there is one portion of instant potatoes ready to go. Now where this is a real advantage is I can go ahead and make these up ahead of time at home to carry to the field in my little bush pot. I don't want to make these up months in advance or anything but at the same time I go ahead and I do it and I make it up and I put it and I'll show you in a minute into a Ziploc bag that now stand it up shake it down roll it over like that rolling them sharp points just like that there's a portion <coughs> I can do other dried mixes, pastas, cake mixes. Go ahead and measure it out. Take a big old cake mix and turn it down into small enough portions to take to the field to make a canteen cup cobbler or something like that without having to worry about waste or etc. Shut that down a little bit. There's a small piece of aluminum foil right here. <clears throat> this is simply full packet cooking just like they used to do in the Boy Scouts years ago
but instead of taking meat and vegetables, which I can do for uh, throwing the fire, I've made up a container to carry my stuff. Now, could you put this into Ziplocs? Absolutely, you could do that. But I found this works just about as well. And the fact that most time whenever I get there, aluminum foil comes in so handy in so many other ways. There's enough aluminum foil here that I, especially if I picked up, say, some sort of wild game, like fish or meat of some kind or whatever, I could take this aluminum foil whenever I straighten it out to get my potatoes out. There's a big enough piece there, see, to wrap up some piece of meat or whatever to put in the hot coals and cook it that way. I knew an old scoutmaster when I was a boy that he taught all of his scouts to do this. And now you would put this into your bush pot. So there are four separate meals worth of potatoes if I want to eat nothing but potatoes. But I'm not going to do that. I would alternate. So this one might be potatoes. I can just mark on it with a magic marker. This one might be some sort of pasta dish. This one might be some sort of rice dish. And so I can raid the cabinet at home and come up with some other type of dish to put in here. So some sort of pasta dish to just is add water or bowling bag rice, something like that, where it was uh, minute rice or something. I can measure out portions to carry in the field and not have to waste so much. Now, the amount of water it's going to need, that's where we're going to the next section. Now, the Ziploc bag. What's the Ziploc for? This is for the camp taters I'm not going to be carrying with me. So I'm going to take and put them in here ahead of time in my camp box or whatever. This one's going to the field with me. See, these are going to be staying in the camp box and this will be labeled up here, camp taters, ready to go. Right? And then on it, tell me how much water I need. Now, I'm going to show you how to mark a bush pot to be usable. I'm going to be carrying this little spoon. And you could get on the inside and put scratches in the pot or put dents in the pot with a punch or something like that. What I found that works best for me is this. This little spoon is going to be riding with my bush pot. Okay? It's got enough of a point that I can reach all the way down in the curve of the pot to get food out. It matches the pot, so to speak. This curve needs to fit tightly in that bottom corner so I can get food out of it. If you got something that's too blunt, you can't get the stuff out of the corners down there. So this is what you want. We're going to be eating out of a bush pot. Now, what I'm going to do is to mark it. I've marked my spoon. And how I'm going to do that is, at home, I take my measuring cup. Now, this required two cups for the whole thing. So for an individual portion, would be a quarter cup, correct? So what I'll do is I will take my bush pot and put it on a relatively level per, uh, surface. I will take my measuring cup at home and I will come up here and see that this right, make sure I ain't gonna blast something, there we are. This right here is a quarter cup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour that water into the pot and I'm gonna take this spoon and I'm gonna stand it up with the handle like a measuring stick to the bottom and having done that I put it in the water I pull it out and you'll have the wet line and dry above it I then put it on the counter and put my saw for my Swiss Army knife and I went across and I made a notch so right here at this point right here that is one quarter of a cup that right there is one half of a cup this is one cup one and a half cups and two cups those notches on the handle so now i can simply sit that in the pot on a relative level surface and pour water out of my canteen and measure the water and have the right amount of water i set this on the pot on the fire and i bring it to a boil when the water comes to a boil i open up my package and throw my uh, 
taters into it. That's the right amount of water. And then stir it up. Take it off the heat, sit there and stir it up until it fully hydrates and ready to go. This will make sure that I've got the right amount of water to it. Instead of trying to add water, I have a pre-measured amount of water and then I add the dry ingredient to it. Again, and this will right inside the pot. Now, if you got something else that you need to measure, break down the size, how much water, and you may want to measure in tablespoons. How many tablespoons of dry whatever ingredient to how much water? So let's say, like doing oatmeal. I put a given amount of water into my pot. I can either just eyeball it or I can measure it. See, with my spoon. Bring it to a boil and know that this package of oatmeal dumps into that. Or I start, if I got a big bulk, like I'm just going to carry a large thing of rice with me. I can then put in the amount of water I want to eat, the volume, and then add in the dry ingredient, stirring it until it becomes the right consistency. So I can just measure water and add dry. Either way works. I like to pre-make them up ahead of time like this so that I know that plus that mark right there in the bottom of that bush pot is the right amount for camp taters. So that's camp taters. Camp potatoes and gravy set up. All I've got to do is bring the measured amount of water to a boil, dump that packet in, stir it just a little bit, pull it off the fire and let it reconstitute. And I got a hot meal. Now I can supplement this with other things. You know, I could have, I don't know, uh, especially in the fall, it could be a squirrel or something that I've killed that I could roast on a fire. You know, put it on a spit and put it up there. When it's just about done, then I'd make up my bush taters to go with it for meat and taters. But I didn't get lucky and I didn't get a squirrel. Taters will be fine. It'll keep me from being hungry. And I'll be able to go on. But I could have rice dishes. I could whatever. And I can stack those aluminum packs in here and just take a, mar a marker and write on it that it's camp taters, one quarter cup. I take my little bitty spoon, I put that in there, and I can take water that I'm procuring locally and slide down in that pot and see how much water I need. I bring the water to a boil and then I dump the dry component on, into it and stir it up. That, I, that is right now four, so that'd be five or six meals that would fit in that bush pot. As a standalone meal and as a supplement to whatever else I'm trying to do. Suppose I'm trying to fish, and I'm catching fish, and I want to grill fish. Well, what could I make to go with fish? Rice, or some sort of other dish, or whatever. You see what I'm saying? It becomes something that I can pick up off the shelf. A lot back in my day, we carried a whole lot of uh, macaroni and cheese, because it was like 10 cents a box. Now, today, you carry ramen. But in my day, we carried macaroni and cheese. And so, could I carry ramen in that pot? Yeah, I can stand a brick of it up in there. So there's one meal right there. And I could slide other meals in on either side. So, so I could easily get one day's worth of meals in this pot. That when I get there, I pull the meal I'm not going to eat out, take care of my meal, clean the pot up, return the thing, snap the lid on and it goes back into the rut sack or it goes back in the haver sack or whatever. So that would be all I would need for an overnighter, really, just for me. And yeah, oh well, Blackie, it's kind of mundane. Well, experiment a little bit. There are all kinds of soups and sides and everything that are good by themselves. Instant soup works well for this. Instant chili, that darn good chili that they sell at Walmart, Go look on the soup aisle, and there's going to be these packets like those potatoes were in. But it'll, it'll say darn good chili, and then there's uh, chicken noodle soup, and there's a couple others. I've used them many times in this very design, but putting it into a canteen cup. So I would come home and divide it into individual portions that was a canteen cup equivalent. So I'm not hauling too much to the field. Instead of carrying the whole thing, knowing I'm not going to eat all of that at one sitting, 
or making up a pot that's way too big for me to eat all of it at one sitting. I can divide it into my size portions. Now, maybe you don't want to do like I did and make quarter. Maybe you like to eat a little bit more than I do. Then make it into half. You know, a half would be that much in that bush pot. That's a lot of potatoes in half a bush pot. Yeah, you big boys make the whole package and just make a whole pot of potatoes with gravy in it. Another trick, and I've done this in videos many times, is those single serving spam packets for making a sandwich right quick. Haul those along. Those will slide in there too. And so classically what I did in a canteen cut, which would work just fine in this, is you put this onto the heat with just the measured amount of water in it. And then you take that single serving of Spam and cube it up into small pieces and put it in the water and let it boil with the water. It does two things. It adds a little bit of flavor and it gets a little bit of grease to come out of that ham. Okay. The water is, when it gets to be a good rolling boil, let it boil about a minute, two at the most. And then you dump your dry potatoes and gravy mix in with it and stir it all together. So you got meat as long as potatoes and gravy. And that's classic camp taters with Spam. Meat and taters, or we used to call hog and hominy. That's another story. But it was something quick and filling and kept you going on the trail with little bulk. And so these little bush pots can serve as a single use type, a single individual cook set by what you add to it. Now also, with this one, I've got that little spoon. Now where'd that spoon come from, Blackie? You know the Caplica cups? This is the spoon that comes with it. I saved the spoon. And it's a perfect size to fit in this little bush pot and be out of the way. Also, that little small folder cup goes in here. That means that whenever I want to use this for coffee or tea or whatever, I can pop my cup out, fold my cup into configuration, and have a little coffee cup or a little tea cup or something. And then this becomes a whole pot of coffee. Yeah, it's small portions. I can drink that whole thing or I can drink it straight out of here. I got a little cup that I can use for things and it fits easily into this pot along with that little bitty spoon and pre-made up packet of food. In fact, at potatoes, I can easily squeeze them in because it's malleable, right? Into that little cup. Put it in the bottom, drop in my little spoon, put a couple more stuff on top, and I'm good to go. There would be four or five meals. Push it in there, Ziploc bag so I can pull it out clean and easy. Push everything down, put the lid on top, snap it on and we're good to go. Pretty easy. Hope you've enjoyed this content, guys. If you have, please hit that like button before you go and feed the algorithm for me. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.